Hello everyone. We want to learn about the data transformation. Um, data transformation and generally speaking, transformers are very useful. If you want to work in like machine learning or like even if you want to write a small code um, in R. So you would need to, um, most of the time, you would need to work with these transformers. So for our course, I'm gonna, we are going to go through the concept of this one to learn that what is data transformers and like um, how can we use it. And then at the end of the chapter, we have, a, we have an example, but that example is like the application of it. And if your research is about the, like your work is about the, um, like you're working with the data transformers, in that case, that one is going to be helpful for you. But knowing the concept that, what does it mean when we say data transformers? And like, generally speaking, the different types of the transformers that we have, what's, how do we use them? And what do we, mean, what do we mean when we say transforming? Like, what are we transforming? So that one is, in my opinion, is gonna be very helpful for all of us to learn. And let's um, look at the, at the, I'm gonna, there are something for you, um, generally speaking. So it's like the sober we said that, for example, y is equal to um, so that x beta, right? The matrix of x times beta uh, plus epsilon. So that's what we said for the like um, multiple linear or linear um, regression models. Sometimes what happens is that um, the relation between y and x, it's not in, in it's not linear, it's like when you're looking at the um, data, like the distribution of the data, you will see that, for example, y squared is equal to x. Like, um, for example, let's say you have something, when you're looking at the, all of the distribution of the data points, it's like you will see, oh, you have, instead of having some data points, you said that if, let's say, data points are like this, you would consider a linear line for it, right? Instead of having that, you would have um, something, let me just find out my... You would have, let's say, something like this. So what happens is that when we want to fit a line for it, you will see that, oh, if we fit a line like this, a bit similar to the times that we have y is equal to logarithm of x. Um, that would be a better fit for us. So in these cases, we can use the data transformers. So now let's see what does it mean generally, even before going to the notes, what does it mean when we say we are doing the transformation? It's very simple. The idea behind this, like for any kinds of the transformator, using any kind of the transformators, it's very, it's, um, or transformers, sorry. So it's super easy. It's like that instead of why, you're gonna put something else. Like for example, instead of y, I'm gonna put y squared is equal to um, matrix x times beta plus epsilon, which is our error. So this beta, we put it theta sometimes as well because we, beta means the parameter of x, but we have different types of the parameters. So you might have this question that, okay, so why do we work with y? Why we don't work with x? The main reason behind it is that um, altering y is easier because we might have more than one x as the uh, independent variable, right? So when we, we are working with, working with multiple linear regression, what happens is that we can have x1, x2, x3, altering all of them, just think about it. Altering y is going to be just have one y, which is the um, dependent variable. So if we alter this one, it's going to be easier. So we would have, for example, we can have like y power two is equal to this, or we can have like log of y is equal to x bar beta plus epsilon. So what happened is that we are going to do the same methods that we did before to find out the uh, value for these betas. The only thing is that, do you remember that we had a table and in our table we had like x, we would write down x and then y, like we had, we said that these are the number of observation of x1 and x2, let's say I have two independent variables, this matrix of x, right? x1 and x2, and then I had y, 
and we would find out our ANOVA table or when we were working with the experimental design, we were finding out the effects based on this Y. So what the only difference is that you're going to do exactly the same things. Instead of Y, you are going, if you are working with this, you're going to have a new column and it would be put down by two. So this is like that. The, um, this, this is the transformation that we do. Is that you don't change the whole model. The only thing that you are transforming is like your y value. So what I'm going to do here is going to be y squared. Or if I'm working with this one, the last column instead of y, I'm going to change it to log logarithm of y. Or if you are look, if we're working with the we have one over x, I'm going to go through that when I'm showing you the notes. But I want you to uh, understand it here when we are talking about the transformers. It's like that we are changing this y, um, and we're going to go through that why, why we would do that, what's the reason behind it, in what cases we would do that. But basically the idea is like this. You, you're going to do the same things that you did before for ANOVA table, finding out your sum of squares, like residuals, all of them. The only thing instead of having the, instead of considering the column of y, you don't consider why you would consider the result of the transformation. It's like that you would consider the logarithm of y, for example. So that's um, the whole sorry, the whole idea behind these um, like transformation that we have. Now, if we have when you're talking about the these type of the transformation. Choosing the proper transformation is very transformer is very important. Like we are going to look at the distribution of data and then we would decide what type of the transformer we would use. Like for example, if we, I have Poisson distribution, um, Poisson distribution was the time that you would have a discrete variable and it would be in the, the environment that you would have the, those discrete variables going to be like continuous. Because of that, we would have, we would call it like Poisson. Like, for example, if you want to find out the, let's say, um, the number of the, the number of the um, specific pollutant in the Lake Ontario. So it's like that, for that one, it's going to be Poisson distribution. For Poisson distribution, we would go with some type of the, some kind of the transformers. Like, for example, for if you have like, a binomial distribution, binomial distribution is like that you would have the results is going to be failure or success. We are going to go with another types of the transformers. So what are we going to, but all of them, the method that we use is the same, like the general approach is the same. It's like that we would say, okay, I have the new y, right? I would change the column of the y to the, um, replace it with the new value for the like for example, with the, as a result of transformer and or transformation, and then you're gonna find out your model. So the la, the final model that you have is gonna be, for example, it's gonna be log logarithm of y is equal to matrix of f beta plus epsilon. Just be careful when you wanna represent your regression model at the end. You need to consider this log of y. You cannot write down y is equal to. You can revert like um do the math, like all of the operations that you would need on it to have like y equal to something, right? For example, if I have, let's say I'm working with this one, if I say that my final result is y squared equal to matrix of x beta plus epsilon. So at the end, when you found everything, you will say, okay, y is equal to a square root of whatever you have in front of you. You can do that at the end, but while you're working with this, it's like that you consider this one as, a, as your transformer. And um, when we have these ones, we call these um, power transformers. And power transformer is that um, we have two main power transformers that we would use in um, R or in machine learning. One is the uh, Box-Cox transformations, and the other one is U Johnson transformation. Um, and we, for different situations, we would use it. In this chapter, we are going to talk about the Box-Cox one um, specifically, and I'm going to show you the equations that we would use for it, um, which is why we would say why power lambda, uh, but it's kind of the power transformer, right? This is the power transformer. This log of y 
is like the power transformer. It's like that, for example, if you say Y power lambda and the lambda is equal to zero, then you would, instead of that one, you would call, you're gonna write down log of, logarithm of Y. So as I said, so for power transformers, and we have to, let's have it in one picture, see what we are gonna learn so far. What did he say? He said that we have different types of transformers that we try to, like for example, um, transfer um, our regression model to new one, and then we will solve it with the same things that we have. So we have the our regression model, then I'm gonna change my Y to the new, based on the distribution of the data, with the transformer, I'm gonna move it to the new uh, regression model, right? And then I'm gonna do the ANOVA table, the analysis of variance, which ones are significant or not, like the um, design of experiments, the fraction, factorial, all of those ones that we have learned. So we're gonna do the same things, uh, like same method. The only thing is that the value of Y, the observation, is gonna be the new value of Y, right? And then um, the common, a form that we use for these transformers are the power transformers. Um, and for the power transformers, we have two categories. One is the Boxcox transformation, which we are gonna cover in our course, and then it's gonna be U Johnson transformation. Just if you were interested to know more about these things, let's say you're working in machine learning and you need to know the concept behind it, whenever our Y is greater than zero, we would go with the Boxcox one. Um, and Boxcock is a very old one, like it's, there were two people and they published a paper, both of them, their field was the statistics, and uh, they published over in 1964, um, and they thought that it's probably, it was very simple for them, but it's one of the most applicable transformers that we use a lot in machine learning and R. Like when you, you want to code in R or even in Python, you will see that they have like the, you will see if you, if you, uh, research is about it. So we have the U Johnson and Boxcox. For the Boxcox, we are gonna use it when, or BC transformations, we are gonna use it when our Y is greater than zero. And the U Johnson one is the time that we have like the Y, if Y is equal to zero or less than Y value, right? The observation is equal to zero or less than zero, then we can use the U Johnson. Now let's go to the um, notes. That was just an introduction of that. Uh, generally, we want to know that all these data transformations that when we are talking about it, what does it mean? What, are, what do we really transform? We are transforming by, right? 